Well, hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Kuber. I know a lot of you are very, very interested in what's happening with the Express Entry. Well, if you still had any kind of doubt as to what's happening with Express Entry and when the draws will resume, well, then Sean Fraser this morning tweeted from his account specifying that the draws will resume on the 6th of July. And these would include the invitations from uh, Express Entry Pool for Federal Skilled Worker Programs, Federal Skilled Trades Program, and Canadian Experience Class, which basically means this is going to be an all program draw. Bill C-19 has not yet been implemented. As of this time, the ERPA, the Immigration Refugee Protection Act, still stands as it was, and those changes have not yet been implemented. Therefore, when the draws will resume on the 6th of July, which is only two days from now, then that will be an all program draw and would basically be a normal and a regular draw as we have been used to. So what do we expect with the express entry pool? Now, if you look at the pool breakdown as of 20th of June, 2022, the numbers do look scary. And I did a video, just the last one, in which we went into the depth of how the pool breakdown looks like and what to expect from these express entry draws. Definitely the first draw is going to be 500 plus CRS for sure, for sure, uh, because there are more than 8,000 people in the express entry pool. But this video is not about that. This video is what are we going to expect for people whose scores are not 471 and above. Now, talking about the people who are below 470, what are they going to do? What is your strategy? What should you be planning? I mean, is Express Entry over for you guys? Is is this is is Express Entry now meant only for people above 475? Is that what I'm saying? No, that is not what I'm saying. Get job offers, not because you have to buy them, but obviously the right way, the legal way, which is by looking for employers who are interested in your skills. Now you can get job offers by by three ways. First one is you have exceptional skills and talents because that's when the job offer comes to you or that's when the employers are interested in you. Second is you have network of influence, friends, relatives, relatives, friends, friends of friends, friends of relatives. If you have anybody who you can reach out who's in Canada, give them a call. This is a time to sort of show them your charm. This is to sort of, you know, um, be more charismatic and sort of talk to them, network with them and see if they can help you find an employer who might be interested in your skills. Third is it's that you buy a job offer, but don't get involved in that. That's illegal. If you get caught and there are a lot of people who get, do get caught for misrepresentation, not only will your application be refused, you will be barred for five years and then that would not be a very nice thing to happen. So in these situations, how do you find a job offer? Difficult one, very difficult one. Even for people who are inside Canada, finding a job sometimes is quite difficult. But for people outside, it's like it's like you have a better chance of striking a lottery and winning that one than finding a job offer. But for people who really, really have the, the perseverance, the resilience, then for you guys, let me give you this tip. LinkedIn works, not for everybody. It works for a lot of you. If you can identify the companies you're interested in. You identify the skill sets that they're looking for. You identify your skill set and one you can match. Reach out to people, network with them, uh, send out DMs if you have to to them, but always do not look at offering yourself for the job right away. Because imagine those people, they're always getting these kind of messages from different kind of people and they're not interested all the time. So don't do that. Always look for ways of what you can do to help them, to contribute to them or to add to them or to add to the relationship that you're going to establish versus what you want from them. If you're able to do that, then you might strike a jackpot there. That's number one. Number two, Job Bank of Canada. Now, Job Bank of Canada, you will see so many vacancies there from the employers. Now, you might think those are the available vacancies. Well, Job Bank, in most cases, are those employers who are advertising simply because they need to apply for LMIAs for people they've already identified. So you applying to those jobs in most cases is not going to get you anywhere. However, what that does is by looking at the job bank, you now know who are the employers who have job offer, who may be interested, who may have a vacancy or who are usually regularly hiring. What that does for you, it narrows down your research because now you know who are the employers in your field, in your occupation, in your trade, who prospectively could hire you. Then you go to LinkedIn, you find those employers, you find the people who might be working in that company and see if you can network with them, see if you can use their connection, see if you can, through your network of influence, connect with those people and then look to find the job offer. Third and then the last one is basically the, the drilling effect, right? You keep at it, you keep going. 
morning you apply for 25 jobs evening you apply for 25 jobs apply to the jobs on linkedin apply to the jobs on indeed monster workopolis uh, career jobs uh, career spider career owl all these different different platforms which are there for job boards keep applying keep at it at it at it at it keep going uh, I, I know of people who have applied to more than 1000 to 1200 jobs they did that they, they were at it and they finally got lucky okay so it happens it does it's not like it's absolutely out of the window but then this is a lot of hard work and you, you need to keep going with it so this is the first one for people uh, who are looking to find job offers this is basically how you can find it if you wish to it's a lot of hard work absolutely hard work but then if this is your dream if this is your objective then you've got to put in the hard work second is you get to canada how do you get to Canada? You can get to Canada on a visit visa. All right. So if you are eligible to apply for one, if you are able to apply for one, if you're able to get one, get a visit visa, come to Canada. What does that do for you? Now, a lot of people will tell you by coming to Canada on a visit visa, you can automatically get work permit. It can be converted to a, it cannot be converted to a work permit. There is no such thing as conversion in a Canadian immigration application. You cannot convert one visa to another visa that doesn't happen so that word conversion by itself is is incorrect is inappropriate what you do is you apply for a new status you change your status and that basically what you would, might, might want to call it as conversion so what can happen is you come to canada on a visit visa you are legally allowed to search for jobs if you wish to if once you come in canada you are sightseeing you like the place you now may want to uh, explore an option of you know possibly seeing if there is an employment opportunity for you you meet an employer they are in love with you because you have such amazing personality and, and you're such a charismatic character and uh, they offer you a job because your skill sets are something which they are looking for now that they have given you the job job offer, they have also got you the LMIA. You can take the LMIA, you can take the job offer, get your credentials, your documentation, go to the nearest Canadian border, Canadian US border, and you can apply for a work permit. Apply, not convert, apply for a work permit at the border. This is also called flag polling at port of entry. By doing this, you would get a work permit the same day. And uh, <laughs> that's basically how you will be in Canada on a work permit. You can start working after you get the work permit. So this is something which you can look at. If you are in Canada on a, on, on a visit visa, you can study for a program which is for less than six months. Only if it is for less than six months, you can study without needing another uh, study permit. Now, if what you are studying in, the program that you are studying, the short duration, that program is a prerequisite for a longer duration of a program of a study program then while being inside canada you can apply for a study permit for a longer duration and the approval rates are quite high because you already done the prerequisite course which was needed and therefore inside canada processing is also quite all right you would be then able to study for those or rather get your study permit approved and now you're in canada you complete your periods of study you will then be eligible to apply for a work permit, open work permit, one year or three years, depending on the period of your study that you have completed. So these are the two ways that once you are in Canada on a visit visa, you can get a, you can apply for a study visa, you can apply for a work visa. In both situations, you have to comply with certain conditions, certain requirements. So people out there in India, in Pakistan, in Dubai, who are selling these concepts or scams of saying, go to Canada on a visit visa, convert it to open work permit, that's all rubbish. That's all BS. Please do not fall for those scams. Now, what else can you look at? Obviously, you can, if you're eligible, if you think studying in Canada is your cup of tea, then absolutely, by all means, do come to Canada, study in Canada. As we all know, whether it is Motion M44, whether it is Sean Fraser's new framework for pathways, that new pathway that he's looking at, uh, which he is supposed to be working at, on, and should be announcing towards the end of the year, there will always, always, always be more attention, more benefit, more advantage, more uh, pathways for people who are inside Canada. If you have a legal status, all the more better. You will always have some pathway that you can look at, you can opt for, you can embark on towards permanent resident. If you come to Canada, you have an option. You can you have a much better choice versus being outside Canada. Yes, everything that I'm saying is looking like more difficult, but then, hey, as I said, if you really want to make this happen, then you have to make this, you have to put in the work, you have to put in the effort. Now, while we're talking about all these things for people who are below the scores of 470s, what do they do? 
they can do any of these things that I've said, but also keep your eyes open at the PNP options, prevention nominee programs. Now, what is the going, what is going on with them? As you all realize that they have all slowed down. There's like absolute silence in most of the PNP programs, more so because one, they are waiting for their quotas to be announced. So then they know then how many they have issued, how many they can issue going forward. Number two, with Bill C-19 now being approved and the new changes with the categories which will come into play, there is still a lot of ambiguity as to how federal program is going to be using the Bill C-19, how that will be moving forward. So with that in play, how are PNPs going to align themselves? Because if IRCC is going to conduct draws at the federal level, just the same way that PNPs were conducting, then how is it going to be different, right? PNPs have to redesign or re-strategize their program so that they can attract more people to come to their province versus choosing the federal pathway where they will lose out on the opportunities of attracting people to their province. So there is a lot of rethinking, re-strategizing in the works. And once the new PNP programs or the new design of the PNP programs come out, I'm sure you will find them to be some, some of some of the programs will be more conducive to you. So always keep your eyes on Saskatchewan. Always keep your eyes on Ontario. Always keep your eyes on Alberta. These are the three more promising ones. Nova Scotia, maybe, maybe not. New Brunswick, please, again, always keep your eyes on New Brunswick as well, because with New Brunswick, they're always conducting these recruitment events, information sessions. If you get invited, that is again a golden ticket for you to come to Canada. Very, very important factor for people who do not, or at this point of time, feel they do not have a chance in express entry is for you to wait and watch. What are you waiting for and what are you watching? You are waiting and watching the implementation of Bill C-19. Bill C-19, as we all know by now, Royal Assent, they have already got the Royal Assent. So the Bill C-19 in principle has already been approved. The implementation is yet to happen. The expectation is the implementation is going to be towards the end of the year, September, October, November. We do not know when that happens, but during that period of time. Now, if that happens and when that happens, IRCC is going to move away from conducting the draws they, do, they conduct right now. So all the invitations will not go only to the high ranking. It's going to be a complemented effort. Part of the invitations will go to the high ranking uh, applicants in the pool or the candidates in the pool. And the remaining invitations will go to very specific occupations or specific categories as the immigration minister may, may decide upon. Now, these are going to be very, very interesting. If you're still considering French, if you're still on the fence about French, then please, please, please do take up that language. It's a beautiful language. If you can add that as your second language, if you can excel in that, if you can add those scores, you will find that to be of great, great benefit to you. Because within the mandate letter itself of the immigration and every single year, this is only going to keep going up. They will always encourage francophone immigration, francophones who do not want to reside only in Quebec, but also to go out in different parts of Canada. That will always be encouraged. It will be encouraged at the PNP level. It will be encouraged at the federal level. So if you are one of those people who are who is considering, should I, should I study French? Should I not? Then please do. It will definitely make a huge difference to you if you wish to do that, if you choose to do that. Secondly, in terms of the occupations, keep your eyes on the occupations once the Bill C-19 gets implemented and what they will choose. Some of the occupations that I think they would be looking at based on what we have been, because how will they choose these occupations? So these occupations are not going to be chosen out of their whims and fancies. There would be a lot of contribution from different stakeholders, which includes the PNPs, which includes the different um, business groups, which includes uh, practitioners, which includes uh, advocacy groups. Uh, associations, uh, all of these will provide their input into indicating which occupations are most in demand in different areas of Canada from what is being seen. And if you take PNPs as a basic benchmark, because PNPs have been doing this for quite some time, for quite a few years, right? So they already have a formula by which they calculate which occupations are most needed in their in their province at that point of time. So if you go with that, it will give you an idea as to which occupations would be considered. Another thing to do would be to go to Job Bank or uh, Stats Canada websites. They also give you a lot of labor market priorities in different areas of Canada. So on top of my head, IT will always be in demand. It has been in demand. It will continue to be in demand because Canada sees that as a way of getting or rather attracting a lot of investment from the American uh, businesses so that if they're able to attract more IT workers to Canada, which basically means more investment will flow in from the American uh, from from the American markets to Canada 
who can set up businesses in Canada. So that will be one industry type which will always be in demand, at least for some foreseeable future. Second, along with IT will definitely be the financial services. I'm not saying which knock codes in financial services. I'm just talking about it in a broad manner because I do not know which knock codes would be there in the financial services. But financial services on a broad term will also continue to be something which Canada will be looking at. And third, very importantly, is the healthcare workers. Healthcare workers, your registered nurses, occupational therapists, doctors, uh, they can always choose doctors, but who have education from or what kind of education. That is something which they will draw in categories. And again, but healthcare workers is again going to be on the top list. And most importantly, it's the skills trade category, which otherwise has been largely ignored in Express Entry. Now, we know in Express Entry, there are three programs. Uh, Canadian experience class, federal skilled worker and federal skilled trade category. Trade category is largely ignored. I mean, sometimes they don't even conduct draws for federal skilled trade category for years together. So those trade categories now will have a lot of attention because Sean Fraser himself has said that they need boots on the ground, not necessarily the best qualified profiles. Express entry, if you are in any of these occupations, you should be looking at how and when the play out. Of course, there would be more occupations as well. I'm not privy to that information, but if you keep your eyes on different PNPs, you will be able to see different occupations that they have been uh, bringing in for quite some time, which have been repeated. You will see a lot of those occupations might also get be might also be targeted by IRCC when the draws for Bill C-19 happen. So this is what you can do if you your scores are below. 470 at this point of time, this is what you can target, this is what you can aim, this is what you can work towards. And hopefully you would also be on your way to Canada very soon. If you guys are still here, smash the like button, follow us on Instagram. If you wish to make an appointment on one one if I haven't been able to answer your questions, then you can make an appointment or drop in the comment below your questions and I'll come back and answer them. Absolutely, please do subscribe to the channel. want to see those numbers going up. That's it from me for today. Thank you so much for joining in. I shall see you next time. Take care and hey, tune in on the 6th of July when we will sing and dance and celebrate the resumption of the Express Entry Draws. Take care.